All right, morning campers, here we go. It's the uh, little bit on organic. You want to grab chart P, chart Q, and chart R, and we're going to just remind you of some things and maybe a couple new things. One of those old things is that you'll notice on chart Q there were three families, alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. So I'm going to remind you of a couple things. On table Q, if we want to talk alkenes, first thing we might notice is that the family formula, sometimes called the homologous series formula, is C to the N, H to the 2N. For example, I would know I had an alkene if it matched that, that pattern like this does, C5H10, twice as many hydrogens as carbons. Now, to reflect that a different way, besides writing the chemical formula, we might write a structural formula. So for example, I'm going to finish this one off. And a question that often comes up, I know, in my classes, I'm sure in Mr. B's, is do I really have to draw all the hydrogens? And the answer is yes. If it's on the Regents exam, they're expecting you to show all those, so make sure you do. So here I have five carbons, and now I've drawn ten uh, hydrogens. The only way to make that happen and to have the right number of bonds on everything is there must be a double bond in the molecule and you may recall that that the alkenes had at least one double bond in them. So that's one possible way of drawing that. Now another possible way of drawing that would be to just reposition the double bond into another location within the five carbon chain and so I'm going to draw it on the end this time and I think I still now have 10 hydrogens. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All right, now obviously these are different molecules. They don't have the double bond in the same location. They are both pentenes because they have five carbons. And again, if you go back to table P, you'll see that pent was the prefix for five carbons. So we know these are both pent something. And so I'm going to write that below this name, pent. And we're going to use the family last name, or suffix, which is E-N-E. -E. And then the last thing we have to do, or I'm reminding you, you, you already know this, is to locate the double bond. And the quickest way to do that is come in from the right side, in this case, numbering the carbons. And the first carbon I run into with a double bond in it is the first one. So we just go one pentene. This one here would still be pent, again, five carbons, E-N, because it has a double bond. And counting in now, I don't get to the double bond until the second carbon in, and so I would call it 2-pentene. You may recall that we call this situation uh, an example of isomerism. There's two isomers of pentene, and we have them drawn. They, they have the same chemical formula, but a different structural formula. That was the definition of isomers. All right, now carrying that into something a little new, uh, chart R, we didn't work with too much in the, in the uh, first half of the year. It's a real easy chart to work with. You're going to need to spend some time with it learning how to recognize uh, what we call the functional groups on compounds that contain oxygen and nitrogen. And so you're just going to need to use that chart and do some of the drills. And I'm just going to coach you a little on that. So for example, anything that's an alcohol is an alcohol because it has an OH on it. Now that's not a hydroxide like it is in acid-base theory. It's what's called a hydroxyl group. Very similar. Be careful though, it's not a base and you would catch that because it's attached to a carbon containing compound and that's a classic way that the Regents likes to trick you. So watch out for that. Uh, anyways, an alcohol, for example, could have the formula C3H7OH. The R in this general formula stands for the rest of the molecule besides the functional group, and so in this case it's C3H7. Now, to draw the structure, we could draw three carbons and then decide that we need to put an OH on there, and I didn't really specify here, so it could be here on the middle carbon, or it could be on the end carbon, which would look like this. Now you'll notice in all the drawings we've been doing that carbon has to have four bonds. I'm just reminding you it had four valence electrons, therefore it will bond four times regardless of how that bond happens. Now again, these two have the same chemical formula, C3H7OH, but they have different structures. Here the OH is on the first carbon, here it's on the second carbon. I'm reminding you again to go back to chart P, the prefix for three carbons is PROP. 
and for an alcohol we take the uh, hydrocarbon name, drop the ending and add OL, you'll see that on chart R, and here I'm going to say 2-propanol. The OH group is attached to the second carbon in no matter which end I start counting from. Here I would again name it propanol, it would make sense that it would have the same name except where the OH is located. So again, I come to that OH quicker if I count from the right, so I'm going to call that one propanol. They have the same chemical formula, different structural formula. Now the cute thing in chart R is that you can be an isomer also in other families, and uh, we'll talk about some of those linkages here in a second, but ethers happen to be isomers of alcohols, and we can see that. C2H5OCH3 adds up to three carbons, eight hydrogens and one oxygen. If we come back up here, we see that another way this could be written is C3H8O. Same exact chemical formula, but must be something different. This is different because the, the carbon, is, uh, carbon total amount of carbons is split up by an oxygen. So it looks like this. Then the O, and then the CH3 group. Now, what do we call it? Well, we name these by naming the two carbon R, R groups, the two carbon chunks. And here we would name this eth. You may remember a branch is got a Y and L ending, so this would be ethyl. And this one carbon branch would be meth for one carbon, YL, because it's a branch. And then we put the word ether on there. Now you can see that exemplified on chart R. They give you an example of how to name. All right, real quick now, the families that can be isomers besides alcohols and ethers are ketones and aldehydes. Those are paired up. You probably should memorize or know that or at least be able to handle it. And organic acids and esters are also isomers. So those uh, three pairings, these two, and alcohols and ethers, are uh, families that can be isomers. Can I interject? Mr. B. Yeah, I just, want to oh, I just want to interject for a minute. Table R has the title functional group because it's this part of the molecule that really gives the functionality to the molecule. So th w since we have isomers of the same formula right here, uh, really what gives it its properties or gives it its function is this group at the end, this, in this case here, the alcohol group, and in this case here, acting as an ether. So they act differently so based on they, where that oxygen is. Even though they is. have the same formula, they have very different properties, exactly. boiling points and melting points. Different functions. Different functions as uh, compounds. Right. Good. Thanks for that, Mr. V. And the last thing we want to do is we'll just remind you or point out a few things about organic compounds and the resulting properties. First of all, they're carbon-based. So if, if something's organic, it's because it is rich in carbon. Remember, carbon has four valence electrons, therefore it needs to bond four times. It could do that with all single bonds, could do it with a combination of single and multiple bonds. Um, they tend to be nonpolar molecules, a few exceptions including the acids, but most of them are nonpolar. Therefore, going back to your bonding ideas, they attract each other with van der Waals forces, or intermolecular forces if you like. Again, that's the tendency. And a reminder that within van der Waals or any intermolecular force, the higher the molar mass is, the higher that particular intermolecular force, in this case van der Waals. So there's a stronger intermolecular force between bigger molecules. And that then results in the physical properties being different. For example, the larger the molecule, the stronger the intermolecular forces, that would mean it would be harder to separate those molecules to get them to melt or boil. All right, so the larger the molecule within a family, the higher the boiling point. So if you got a question that asks uh, which of the following has the highest boiling point, methane, ethane, propane, or butane, you'd pick the biggest molecule in that case, butane. I think that's a wrap, Mr. B.